When Nora and Alec decide to stay in a dubious cabin, they find themselves captives in a cult-like community that treats them like farm animals. As couples Nora and Alec drive to the countryside, they find themselves on an unfamiliar route. Nora knows they're lost, and she grows irritated by the minute. Not long after, they stop by an abandoned diner. Wanting to urinate in an actual bathroom, Nora excuses herself to look for one. She ends up at the back of the facility, where she finds the remains of a camp that has a few important items like a wallet and a phone. However, she tosses them back and proceeds to do her business, not knowing that a human skull lies nearby. As they drive away, they unknowingly pass by a pile of human skeletons. In the car, Nora tells Alec about the abandoned campsite, but he's not interested because he's more concerned that they'll soon run out of gas. They keep on driving until they spot a woman with a broken car. Alec offers to help her with his jumper cables and the woman accepts. While he tries to fix the vehicle, the woman asks Nora why Alec hasn't married her yet. This surprises Nora, so she tells her that it's none of her business. The woman takes offense to this and replies that people like Nora are irresponsible and privileged. Nora reminds the woman that they're helping her, to which the woman rebuts that she's never asked for help. Because of this, Nora tells Alec that they're going, leaving the woman without fixing her car. As they drive away, Nora complains about Alec jumping in to save the day for the crabby woman. He defends that he was being nice, but his girlfriend notes that she avoids the country to avoid people like her. Later on, they reach a diner and decide to grab a bite. After finishing their meaty burgers, Alec notices that a weird man keeps staring at them from the end of the aisle. However, Nora reassures him that he's probably just curious about visitors. As they get up to leave, the weird man suddenly grabs Nora's arm and warns her that she's not safe in town. When Alec interferes, the man lets go, and the couple leaves. In the car, Alec asks Nora if she's okay, and she responds that the incident was no big deal. Not long after, they reach a gas station, where Alec asks the cashier if there are any hostels in the area. The cashier tells them about a cabin just down the road, so they head back to their car. As they leave, however, the cashier watches them. While they drive to the place, Nora notes that she wants to check the place before deciding to stay there. However, Alec insists on taking a break instead of getting into unwanted accidents while driving in the middle of the night. Upon reaching the cabin, they notice many parked cars around, so Alec sees this as a sign that other people are inside. Once they enter the cabin, Nora gets creeped out and asks Alec if they could just go. However, he reassures her that people have been there based on the used plates on the table. As they look around, they can't find anyone to help them check in, so they go upstairs. To their surprise, the landlord with a disfigured face greets them. He apologizes for not hearing them and asks where they're from. Alec replies that they came from Los Angeles. After this, the landlord Lord leads them to the cabin, which happens to be isolated from others. He explains that it used to be rented by Boy Scout troops or church groups, hence the bunk beds around. Since their usuals haven't checked in lately, he turned the cabins into motels. Alec casually asks if the landlord has been there long, so the man notes that he's been running the place since 1989. He starts rambling about driving away from everything he knew when he stumbled upon the place and fell in love with it. Immediately, he asks for a job there to fix up the cabins. A woman named Mrs. Anderson used to own it, but she passed away four years ago, leaving the motel to him. Tired of the casual talk, Nora cuts the dialogue short and says they need a break. The landlord gets offended and loudly shuts the door as he leaves. Alec confronts Nora about her rude approach, but she argues that she's repulsed by the man's appearance. As the couple talks, they fail to notice the blood stain on another bed. That night, they prepare for bed and drift off to sleep soundly, unaware of the figure that's under their bed. When morning comes, the figure moves out of the bed, revealing himself as a man with a sheep mask. He towers over the sleeping couple and leans closer. Later, Nora wakes up in a cage. She struggles to set herself free, but another man in a goat mask appears and bangs her cage to make her shut up. After this, he abruptly leaves. Nora takes the opportunity to grab a stone near her and use it to break the lock. However, the man returns with another man in a cow mask, who pours a liquid substance over Nora, making her lose consciousness. Soon she wakes up in a barn, tied to a chair with her legs spread open. Suddenly, a rabbit-masked vet barges into the barn and forcibly inserts something between her legs. The woman inseminates her like livestock, and Nora can't do anything but scream. The vet simply walks out despite Nora's cries and screams. The process weakens her, and when two masked men enter the barn to transport her, she no longer has the energy to fight back. Back in a cage, Nora gets pulled on a wagon by the men in the cow mask. As she gets transported, she sees that these animal masked people have an entire community. Shortly after, the wagon stops, and the man in the cow mask dumps Nora into a stable. As soon as she's alone, she immediately pries the window open, but to no avail. While the women are held captive in stables, the men are placed in tiny cages. Unfortunately, Alec meets the same 
fate and even has a muzzle in his mouth. He desperately screams for help for the other men, but they've all given up and are just waiting to die. Suddenly, three masked men enter the stables. They secure one captive man with a control pole, then bash him in the head with a hammer. After this, they do the same thing with another captive. Alec freezes while witnessing this, but then he becomes hysterical, rattling his cage in sheer fear. This causes the men to approach his cage and attempt to capture him with a control pole. Alec fights back and tries to escape, but the other man knocks him out with a hammer. The men load Alec and the other unconscious captives in the wagon. After delivering them to the slaughterhouse, the man in the pig mask carries a bag of human limbs all over the tight-knit town. Before putting it away, he sees a car pull up nearby, so he waves at the driver and stows the bag in an office. He then approaches the driver and helps him carry a new captive into the stables. Later on, the man in the pig mask meets up with the landlord, who acts as the ringleader of this vile town. The landlord notes that they have an order to feed 80 people, so he asks him if they will have the food ready. Despite the man in the pig mask not speaking, the landlord understands his blank replies. Angry, the landlord barges into the kitchen and demands that the food be ready in two and a half hours. So the workers ground some meat for the lasagna and cook stew. However, as he picks up a call from his customer, he realizes that the client will be picking up the food early. Because of this, he tells the man in the pig mask that they have to use their dairy livestock to compensate. In a separate stable, several lactating women are put into cages with suction tubes in their bosoms. Once the coast is clear, Andrew, the cashier from the gas station, enters the stables and tries to comfort the bereaved mother. The woman curses at him. The childish man gets furious and tells the woman it's their fault for being bad humans. Elsewhere, the landlord receives a complaint from a customer, saying that their wedding was ruined after they found a tooth in their food. He reassures them that they'll get compensated. Then he ends the call when someone calls the man in the pig mask for an urgent matter. The landlord goes to the stables and discovers that one of the women is dead. They notice the wood stabbed in the woman's chest has Andrew's name carved on it, so the landlord immediately orders his men to find him. Meanwhile, Nora meets the captive next to her stall, who has been there for two years. She says all the captives are treated like farm animals, and she was impregnated to the point that she can't get pregnant anymore. At this point, she's already dying but she's more relieved than sad. After the woman tells her that there's no way out, Nora starts to panic. Suddenly, she hears another woman cry from her separate cell. The woman's name is Ashley, and she's been held captive for two weeks. Nora reassures Ashley that they will escape together. Elsewhere, Andrew plays with human heads when one of the landlord's men finds him. He cries, defending that the woman was mean, but the man still drags him out. Shortly after, the landlord reprimands him for wasting their resources. As a punishment, he's to help the farmhands in feeding the captives. However, he accidentally tells the bucket filled with food and immediately runs to avoid the consequences. The man in the pig mask looks for him and finds him running out of the greenhouse. Andrew rushes to the kitchen and hands some oregano to the landlord, who then thanks him for his thoughtfulness. The landlord decides to take care of Andrew and tells the man with a pig mask to dispose of the woman who can't produce milk. In the stables, men enter the stall next to Nora and tie the other woman up. Nora watches as the man in the pig mask slaughters her. Horrified, Nora sinks to the floor, barely able to process what's happening. Later, the man leave and the stables fall quiet. Suddenly, the door rattles and Nora cowers in fear. However, she feels relieved when she sees Alec who tells her to escape with him. The two make their way out of the stables while avoiding the farmhands. Soon, they find a truck, but it won't start. A farmhand gets alerted when she tries to turn the engine on, so Nora assists the injured Alec in hiding. They go around the vehicle and see the farmhand mere steps away from them. Luckily, a bell rings in the distance and the man rushes away. They continue their escape and find a church. Thinking it's safe inside, Nora carries Alec into the church where they find pews covered in plastic. Nora checks the altar and finds a sharp object, while Alec notices the mural on the wall of what seems to be Jesus and his followers but their faces are covered in animal masks. From the window, Alec spots the cow-masked man, so they hide just before he enters. Nora watches as the man sits in front to pray, so she takes a chance to escape while he's occupied. However, in their attempt, the floorboard creaks, and the man rings the church bells to alert the others. The couple desperately tries to escape, but Alec gets caught in a bear trap. Nora tries to help him, but as the farmhands approach, she has no choice but to save herself. Just then, the farmhands steam up, carrying a huge rock and dropping it on Alec's head. As she hears the crisp sound of his crushed skull, Nora continues her escape, crying. She ends up hiding in the male stables just before Andrew and the landlord enter. As they search the other end of the stables, Nora asks one of the captured men about how to escape the place. The man tells her that there's a functional bus that the farmhands use for transporting their victims. He also tells her where the keys are, so Nora thanks him and heads out. However, Andrew turns just as she runs, and he and the landlord simply smile. As she goes to where the keys are, Nora tries her best to hide from the masked people. Just then, she passes by a gasoline station, where she finds a masked man driving a 
away in a car. She follows the car and ends up in a parking lot. There she grabs a hammer and kills the masked man. However, a farmhand suddenly appears, so Nora rushes into the car and attempts to escape. At first, the car struggles to start, but she manages to drive away. A huge smile is plastered on Nora's face, relieved that she finally escaped. Just then, the engine fails and she's left with no choice but to bust out of the car and run for it. As the farmhands chase after her, Nora runs into the kitchen and into the basement. There, she sees a window and tries to escape through it. The farmhands corner her but struggle to reach her through the pipes. Nora finally opens the window, but as she climbs out, a man grabs her ankle. She takes the sharp object that she got from the church and stabs him, allowing her to run away. As she makes it outside, she sees the bus that the man talked about. It happens to be close to the stables where Ashley is, so Nora decides to get her. Ashley is afraid to go with her. She comes anyway. As they get on the bus, they realize that they don't have the keys, so they run to the nearby house to get them. Nora finds the keys, and they immediately run back to the bus. She starts the engine and smiles, knowing that this time, they're finally free. However, she realizes that Ashley has fallen quiet. To their horror, all the farmhands are sitting at the end of the bus, staring right back at them. Soon the masked people gather around the dinner table with the two women served with apples in their mouths. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.